Alright, so today I want to talk about something that I think is extremely overlooked by a lot of people trying to load precision, precision rifle loads, especially the people who are really just getting into loading precision rifles and are trying to figure out how to get those really good groups really work up a good precision load, and that is powder temperature sensitivity. Um, something that when I first started loading precision rifles, I had no clue about and uh, had learned the hard way. That's what I try to do with a lot of these videos is um, try to kind of make the learning curve a little easier for people um, so they don't have to go through all the heartache that I've had to go through along the way to get to where I am today with my precision rifle shooting. So when I first started loading precision rifle, the very first real cartridge that I loaded for was 308. Um, I had really no clue what I was doing. I did a lot of reading, a lot of studying, and tried my best to work up a good load for 308. I worked that that load up. It was about it was right at the edge of winter. It was about 30 degrees outside, and I used IMR 4064. It's a really good powder, really great for loading 308, but it is a very temperature sensitive powder, which means that as the weather heats up, so the powder at 30 degrees where I worked that load up, um, the velocity was much lower, like 100 feet per second or more lower than what it is when you take it out and shoot it in a 95 degree Fahrenheit weather. So I worked this load up for my 308 and it was 30 degrees outside. I was so happy, so proud of it. I had got this load consistently shooting half minute of angle. Um, the very first load that I had really could say that I had worked up a solid load and I shot that load for quite a while um, come that summer I took the rifle out went to shoot at distance I had really I had really finally started getting into long-range shooting and trying and starting to figure out a lot of the little things and took this load out to shoot it at distance at 800 or 1000 yards somewhere in there and Everything was high. I couldn't get the thing to group. It was grouping well over minute of angle. Um, I couldn't find the target. Couldn't figure out what was going on. And I didn't know. When that happens to a precision shooter, somebody shooting precision rifle, it gets really frustrating. You don't know whether you've got something loose, something's wrong with your rifle, your scope, what's going on. Come to find out after lots of, <laughs> lots of, learning and and uh, heartache that what had happened is I loaded with a very temperature insensitive or very temperature sensitive powder so I had over a hundred feet per second velocity change from the 30 degrees weather that I worked the load up in to the 95 degree weather that I took it out and shot in that summer so when you have that much of a velocity change, everything changes with that rifle and that bullet. From your barrel harmonics, um, which is something that we'll get into in another video at some point, but your barrel harmonics are not going to be the same when you have that much more pressure. You have more case pressure, more cartridge pressure, so a lot more chance for overpressure signs or complete overpressure of your cartridge as well as the now shooting that much faster so your elevation correction is going to be astronomically different so I learned the hard way I actually after this stumbled upon by accident trying to figure out what had happened to me that day I stumbled upon Varget which is a absolutely fantastic powder yeah, really good for a lot of different uses um, not just loading 308 uh, there are countless cartridges that are loaded with Varget to great success but I had stumbled upon just doing some reading that Varget was another good powder for loading 308 so I came back I worked up a load did a lot of trial and error and I got almost the same results if not a little better um, as far as my group size and everything with my Varget load and I never had that problem again I never had the problem of 
going out and shooting it in cold weather and being really slow and then going out and shooting it in hot weather and it being a much faster velocity and changing barrel harmonics and all that. And I never really did know what happened. Years later, come you know, doing my research and understanding more and more, I finally understand what had happened. So these are all, all of these hydrogen powders that you see in front of you are all hydrogen extreme powders. So if you look at any jug of hydrogen powders, um, some of them will have this little label here that says hydrogen extreme powder. And what that is, is hydrogen's line of powders that are temperature insensitive. They are all extruded powders, which is the, the powders that you see are like look like little pieces, look, each kernel looks like little cylinders. Um, they're all extruded powders and their extreme line is a line of powders that is very temperature insensitive. And they are probably the most popular line of powders that there is, is Hodgen Extreme Line. Um, most people that shoot precision rifle um, through all different disciplines, um, all types of, of, you know, for, for many different reasons, use Hodgen Extreme Powders. They've been out for a long time and they are very good at being temperature insensitive. Now what that means, like I've said, is that throughout all different temperature changes in your weather, they are going to shoot very close to the same velocity throughout that entire temperature curve. So, as a matter of fact, um, I read in the Precision Rifle blog and the article that we're going to talk about that, that kind of goes over some of these powders here in a second, um, I read in this article that 70% of the time, I think this is how it was stated, I may be wrong a little bit, but 70% of the top 10 PRS shooters um, use Hodgdon's 4350, so this H4350, this particular powder, to load their ammo with. 70% um, of the top 10 shooters in the world that shoot PRS. So there's a reason for that. Um, and we're going to go over that in this, this article that I had read through P, uh, Precision Rifle blog. Um, I have known very, I've been very aware since years ago having all those problems with powder sensitivity. And I really myself only pick powders that are temperature insensitive. And the reason for that is I shoot all year long. I shoot in various different temperatures and for whatever reason that I am shooting, I don't want to chase my velocity curve all year long, adjusting my, my tables, adjusting everything as the temperature changes. So because of that, I pick pretty much every powder that I love. And this is not a commercial for Hodgdon. <laughs> Nobody's paying me, obviously. I don't, have, I don't have enough reach to be paid by anybody for anything. But I only pretty much load my precision rifle loads with Hodgdon Extreme Powders. And I think the proof is in the pudding. If you see some of the videos that I put out, I get very good results from Hodgdon Extreme Powders. Now, <clears throat> Precision Rifle Blog, which if you guys don't know, if you guys don't follow Precision Rifle Blog, um, if you have any sort of questions about Precision Rifle, about some of the different things, um, there's not much that Precision Rifle Blog has not investigated and done a complete write-up on. So, as I was doing, thinking about doing this video, I was just kind of doing a little research and found that Precision Rifle Blog had done a test. Now, IMR, which is another great company who makes really good powder, has a line. Now, this is the Hodgen Extreme line. There's a lot more in the Hodgen Extreme line. This is not it. These are just the ones that I personally use. Um, but in IMR's quest for for temperature insensitivity, they've seen how how uh, popular Hodgen's Extreme line is. They have come up with a line of powders called the Enduron line. And I actually have a some 4166 that I I don't know what's happened to it. My wife placed it somewhere that I don't know. My kids pulled it off my bench or what's happened. I cannot find this jug of powder and I really wanted to bring it out 
as an example for this video. But either way, um, IMR has a line of powders that, just like this has the extreme label on it, theirs underneath the IMR, whatever number, will say Enduron. And that is their version of a temperature insensitive um, extruded powder. Now, the Enduron line has a, a lot of similarities to the Extreme line. As a matter of fact, hi, um, IMR has went as far as to try to make powders that almost clone um, <clears throat> the burn rates and uh, temperature and sensitivity of a lot of, of Hodgdon's powders. So, this article by Precision Rifle Blog they did, they tested Hodgdon's 4350 which one of my favorite powders I load a few different things with Hodgdon 4350 two great results my all my six millimeter cream more is loaded with 4350 a couple of my I've got a, a couple of loads for the 224 Valkyrie um, many different things that I use 4350 for one of my favorite powders and obviously one of the most popular powders that there is but they tested 4350 Varget as these are the two that they tested in Hodgen's Extreme line, which is probably the two most popular powders maybe on the market in general, but definitely probably the two most popular of Hodgen's powders. Um, they tested those next to IMR's 4166, which is their clone, which is the, the jug that I, that I can't find that I wanted to bring out here. Um, they tested 4166, which is their clone of Varget, for the most part, and uh, IMR 41 or 4451, which is their clone of H4350. So in this test, they tested from 25 degrees Fahrenheit up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, so a very large temperature curve. Um, and the way that they got that, you'll have to read the article. Um, but the way that they, they, they came up with these temperatures, you'll have to read, but they were, they were very particular about the way they went about it. Um, so from 25 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 140. Now, in the Hodgins 4350, like I said, probably the most popular powder on the market for precision rifle shooters, um, they got a 25 feet per second velocity change across that entire giant temperature curve. So their Varget across that entire temperature curve, they got 46 feet per second. So now the clone of 4350 by IMR, the 4451, or I think it's 4351, I have 44 broke down, but anyway, um, the IMR 4351 they got a 68 feet per second temperature curve, which is still very good. I mean, that's crossed over 115 degree temperature curve that they got 68 feet per second. Still, for being the clone of 4350, not as, not as consistent as 4350. Um, but I will also say that in my personal testing, I have gotten a little bit more velocity out of the clones of IMR's clones of whatever powder that they're trying to clone, um, but I have not gotten the same results as far as accuracy and consistency. So I still stick with, even though I get a little more velocity from the IMR powders, and I've actually heard this from other people as well, even though I get a little more velocity, I still stick with the IMR's for consistency and just overall, I trust them. Now their 4166, which is their Varget clone, um, Varget got had a 46 feet per second change across that entire curve, and <clears throat> their 4451 had a or 4166, sorry, had a 52 feet per second. So six feet per second difference. So very close, very similar. Um, they've done a really good job of 4166 compared to Varget. So you can almost substitute those two powders with, without having any difference. Now another powder that I really like that wasn't in this test and probably the, the powder that I use other than 4350 the most. I load 300 Wind Mag, I load my 7 Som, um, and a couple other things that I've loaded throughout the years with Hodgdon's 4831. Now they've got two versions of this. 
Both of them are the ex in the extreme line, but there is 4831 and 4831 SC. The SC stands for shortcut. Um, 4831 is very big granules, and the shortcut is seems like they maybe cut those granules in half. Now I will say they are supposed to be the exact same powder, just smaller granules in the shortcut, but that does change the burn rate. I have throughout my testing and I've read this in other places 4831 I get more velocity by a significant amount um, it has a slower burn rate so throughout a longer barrel has more time to build up pressure um, so I've got more velocity from regular 4831 than I have through the shortcut version but I get more consistency through the shortcut and then after doing some research there's a reason for that um, 4831, the, the original, um, has a 0.36% change in velo velocity change per 1 degree Fahrenheit, whereas 4831 shortcut only has a 0.08% change in velocity through per 1 degree Fahrenheit. Now, um, 48 this test they also did uh, they they gave you the numbers for percent change in velocity for um, all the all the the uh, powders that they tested in that this article so in 4350 um, it has a 0.21 percent change per one degree Varget has a 0 0.40 percent change for one degree um, the 4351 is a 0.59% and the 4166 is a 0.45. So they're all pretty close with the 4831 shortcut being the least of all those with a 0 0.08. So extremely temperature insensitive with the 4831. Um, and I have found that to be very true in all my testing. Now, why would why would all this matter? Now I gave you the example in the beginning of my experiences loading a very temperature sensitive powder in 4064. Another thing I want to say before before I get into that is all these are extruded powders. Um, another thing I don't think I said Alliant. Alliant has some powders that are temperature insensitive. But they don't have like an Enduron label or an Extreme label on their packaging. Um, it just, you have to actually physically read. And some Alliant powders, whether it's their Reloader powders or AR Comp or any of the other ones. That's why I brought the AR Comp out. If you look on the label, some Alliant powders will have consistent across temperature extremes. Now, I don't know. I've not been able to find any actual numbers on how consistent but I do know I've got very consistent results from AR comp in 223 loads um, but if you look on some of the Alliant powders that will say consistent across temperature extremes and that is their version of a temperature insensitive powder now let's get back to so why why would this really matter now like I said, I, I gave you my, my experiences with the the very first 308 load that I loaded up with the 4064. But if you're if you're a hunter and hunting is done, you know, throughout the whole year, say say, you know, usually, you know, you hunt during the cold weather and you practice your you practice your marksmanship during the warm weather. So say you work up a load, you're a hand loader and you work up a load during the summer and then you go out and during the snow in the winter in in uh, September October December and you go out and go to take a shot on that that big bull elk or that that big deer or whatever it is that you're hunting and you've used a temperature sensitive powder that and that shot drops way low well, that's going to be the reason why because your powder sensitivity from where you worked it up in the summertime has now your your velocity has fallen off to the point where you're missing your target so it's very important for a hunter to either know what the the change is going to be in their temperature sensitivity or just use a temperature insensitive powder 
Um, another thing is with all these temperature and sensitive powders, I have found that I get better standard deviations and better um, extreme spreads, so lower numbers on my standard deviation, lower numbers on my extreme spread across all the temperature and sensitive powders than I ever was able to get with any temperature sensitive powder. Um, and all these powders are extruded powders. Now I will also say that Winchester has just come out with a new powder which I do believe is the very first ever non-extruded powder. It is a ball powder that is supposed to be temperature insensitive. Um, it is called Stay Ball 65 and I actually saw Johnny's Reloading Bench, who's a great channel, um, gives a lot of really good uh, tips and tricks on reloading. So if you're wanting to learn more about reloading, go check out Johnny's Reloading Bench. But he did a test with Stayball 65 and and compared it to some of the other the Hodgen Extreme powders and IMR powders, um, and he got some really good results. That they were it was still more sensitive than a lot of the the really well known extruded powders but overall pretty insensitive so that is that's something that may be coming is ball powders that are temperature insensitive but anyway so we've got hunting is definitely a big reason to use a temperature insensitive powder um, if you're a hunter and you've worked up your like I said if you've worked up your load and, and you're missing missing your your prize animal you don't want that just because you picked the wrong powder. Now, if you're a competition shooter, competition is the same way. If you go out and you work up your load during the winter time and it's cold out, and you go to your match in the summer and you're blowing primers, you're getting, you're shooting over the target, and you're getting huge pressure pressure spikes. Um, because you used the wrong powder and you worked it up during the winter time and it's not a temperature stable powder um, that's another reason to pick a stable powder or just in general um, I, you don't want to be I personally don't want to be chasing the velocity my velocity all year round cha changing my data tables um, <clears throat> trying to re chrono and, and figure out what my speeds are all year long I just want to go out and shoot and I know that the powders that I load I have a very small change so if I do have a slight elevation change I can adjust that really quickly and know that it was very minimal and I'm still gonna be on target it just may change my water line just a slight bit so that's the reasons why I pick powder temp powders that are temperature insensitive um, I think it's a very a very good thing to do I think that um, people should really think about that and I hope this helps if you if you're just getting into hand loading or you it's something that you've never thought about maybe this will help you in the future and uh, I'll see you guys next time I'm out thank you